ATP, what it do with your boy Claymore Rain? It's that ATP Combat Media Show. Shout out to all my subscribers. If this is your first time tapping into the content, do yourself a favor, subscribe. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Hit your bell icon as well so you are getting alerts when all this content is dropping. So Terrence Crawford agrees to step to the side to allow Errol Spence and Sebastian Fundora to fight. And it looks like it's actually working, right? Let's get into it a little bit. Let's break it down a little bit. This whole entire who's going to fight Sebastian Fundora thing that's been going on, it's been like this thorn in the side of the 154-pound weight class division. Errol Spence came back from a hiatus in the beginning of, beginning of this year on PBC's first event of the year with Amazon Prime, of course. And he came into the ring after a long hiatus after losing a fight to terence crawford after going through cataract surgeries and all kinds of therapy and dealing with issues that supposedly were hold was holding him back on being the 100 percent version of himself against terence crawford pushed aside an activated rematch clause that he activated to fight against terence crawford said he wasn't going to be able to compete or at least that was what the the consensus was that's what the the story was you know maybe maybe we just were in the dark about it but ultimately in the last inning said listen i'm showing up to vegas i want the winner between tim Zhu and sebastian fundora i want a chance to become a champion again coming off a loss getting another opportunity because of his pbc privileges to get involved in getting in a unification title fight being that both the wbc and the WBO 154 pound super welterweight championship belt would be on the line. Jumping in front of a Terrence Crawford who already worked it out with the WBO to become a mandatory to that belt, right? In other words, Terrence Crawford, Crawford was also aligned to get a shot at that fight, but you know, it is a PBC play, it's a PBC game. And as Leonard LB said, I, I believe I have it right here where Leonard LB said it. Maybe I'm wrong. Let me see if I have it here. Do I have it here where Leonard Ellaby communicated uh, to the space? Let's see here. I believe it's right here. Harold, come and join us right here. Hey, what's going on? You said you would like to fight the winner of this fight. Here well, he here is. he is. What do you have, to, what do you have say? to say? I was trying to get it on. He got the beat dog now. Go. Let's go. Right. Well, that was Errol, right? Communicating what, what his intentions was. But I thought I had Leonard Ellaby here speaking on uh, speaking on the reality that Errol Spence was family, right? And that he would get the uh, the privilege, the priority over Terrence Crawford. And he would get that shot at fighting the winner between Tim Zhu and Sebastian Fundora. Well, Sebastian Fundora won the fight. And ever since that's happened, we've heard nothing. From Errol Spence and his team as far as when this fight's going to happen. Sebastian Fundora was suspended for uh, a little while because of injuries he had. He, he walked away with a broken nose from that fight. In the meantime, Terrence Crawford staying out of their way, got involved in, in the title um, fight with Ishmael Madrimov, where we know he won that fight when, in Riyadh season and became a WBA 154-pound weight class champion, as well as an interim WBO champion, being that he was the mandatory to that belt. Now, the WBO gave Sebastian Fundora an ultimatum and said, listen, you are either going to defend that belt against Terrence Crawford or be prepared to vacate that belt because our mandatory takes precedence off of any agreement you're making with an Errol Spence to make this fight happen. Well, Sebastian Fundora had decisions to make, and him and Samson Leibowitz came out and said, listen, we don't want to lose our belt. We want to fight Terrence Crawford. Well, Terrence Crawford sitting back saying, listen, you guys at the time of this whole time situation said that the money fight was with Errol Spence. The big stadium, you remember Cowboy Stadium? Do you remember 40 to 70,000 people inside of the stadium? All the people who want to see Errol Spence because Errol Spence is the cash cow. He is one of the faces of boxing when it comes to this pay-per-view situation. Do you remember that, Sebastian? Do you remember that, Samson? I remember that. Well, now they see that Turkey Alashik is behind Terrence Crawford and that there's money involved in the Terrence Crawford business. And all of a sudden, Samson Leibowitz and Sebastian Fundora changed the tune to their music and said we want to get 
that opportunity. Plus, we don't want to lose our title fight, and we're not going to even speak on the fact that Errol Spence has not even got a trainer yet. We're nowhere near closer, in other words, on making this fight between Errol Spence. Why lose my belt to wait on somebody to even give us a date? We can't even get a date of when this fight's going to happen. Granted, there's been rumors in the space about the fight happening in October. Then the, then the fight got pushed out to December. Now I'm hearing early next year. Still, no guarantees in that. They want to make something happen. And Terrence Crawford said, listen, I'm on my own mission. I'm out, I'm out here trying to make something happen with Canelo Alvarez. If you guys don't know how Terrence Crawford feels about the situation, when he gets focused on something, he's like a pit bull. He can't. He gets that lock jaw. He locks on it. He can't let it go until he finally gets some real confirmation as to what's going on. And Canelo Alvarez went from not being interested in the fight to hold on, wait until after my fight with Edgar Belenga, and maybe we can negotiate something because we have an interested investor in Turkey Al Sheik who's willing who's willing to pay Canelo Alvarez premium Fetty to make this fight happen. And Terence Crawford. Seems pretty confident that this still is going to come around. Doesn't want to do anything that's going to get away in that fight happening. So he's delivered a message. And he said, no, I'm going to throw the ball back in your corner. Errol, Sebastian Fondora, you guys can make this happen. Go ahead. I'm agreeing to let you make this happen. We can do our fight after this happens. Well, you guys want to know what I think? I think what I've been saying is what it is. I think Sebastian Fondora is an elephant in the room. He's a weird pink elephant in the corner of the room that nobody can't figure out what the solution is for. Tim Zhu, you messed up on this one. You really messed up on this one. You see, in my opinion, Tim Zhu was supposed to beat Sebastian Fundora. Nobody expected Sebastian Fundora, even though he's standing at six foot six with an 80 inch arm reach, they expected him in no way to beat Tim Zhu. They expected Tim Zhu to become the champion, and everybody was going to fight over, fight over fighting Tim Zhu because Tim Zhu to these guys was a winnable fight. And Sebastian Fundora is an awkward fight. Like I said, six foot six, 80 inch arm reach, and a southpaw, a puncher at that, and somebody who seems to be getting into his own as he is as he's embracing his height for the first time, embracing his reach for the first time. He's going to be a complicated fight for anybody. In my opinion, the most awkward fight for anybody 154 pounds. And who's gonna take the giant down? Now, am I saying that Terrence Crawford can't win that fight? or that Terrence Crawford would even lose that fight. That's not what I'm saying at all. What I'm saying is Terrence Crawford is looking for a straight line between point A and B. B being legacy and out the door. Sebastian Fondor may be an unnecessary risk and unnecessary amount of um, of liability to be in the ring with. I mean, you saw what happened with Tim Zoom and Sebastian Fondora. Just in a regular fight, Sebastian Fondora, standing where he stands, split Tim Zoom's, um, Tim Zoom's head to the white meat, right? Put him out of commission the way he's just now. And uh, Shout out to Tim Zoom. Good luck on your fight next week against Moro Taliyev to become an IBF champion. But put him out the game to the point where Tim Zoom couldn't even participate in a fight on a Riyadh card where he had the opportunity to fight Virgil Ortiz and get a nice little bag from Turkey al Sheik, right? Still healing from that from that cut on his head so really got put out of commission and because why because sebastian fundora at the end of the day is a liability he's a super tall fighter in a division where most of the people in the division are probably standing underneath five foot nine and here he comes with his six foot six 80 inch arm reach southpaw just awkward fighting style stylistically to fight and i think terence crawford is taking that into consideration and saying i don't need to do this right now when you guys do your job errol spence do your job do the jobs that tim zoo was supposed to have done take down the giant become a champion and let's me and you meet down the road if you can win this fight and make another unification fight that the whole crowd can go crazy for and we all can get money meanwhile while that's happening let's hope that canelo alvarez goes ahead and says listen i'm willing to do that because at the end of the day canelo alvarez because i defeat can either fight terence crawford in a fight that he thinks is a mismatch and a lot of the boxing space thinks or he can get involved with fighting a Christian and Billy next, who's a puncher um, in the division. And just, you know, how much money? I mean, he could do that with Christian and Billy. He could fight Diego Pacheco, possibly put him in position. Or, you know, it seems like he's interested in going up to the light heavyweight division and interested with fighting specifically um, uh, Dimitri Bivol, right? And also getting an opportunity to become another undisputed champion and make him a two-weight class undisputed champion, right? Something that Canelo Alvarez doesn't have on his resume. So he has options, but Terrence Crawford is definitely a legitimate option and some might, some might say the easier 
of all the options and probably where the money is at being that Turkey Alashik is there. I don't really know what the PBC is offering these fighters right now and what they're able to pay out as it looks like they're having a hard time putting on these events that they said they were going to put on. So when it comes to the A side, when it comes to the face of boxing, are they able to sit there and keep on sustaining paying these dudes these guaranteed purses of 30 north of 30 million dollars each fight? Tom will tell that story. But you guys let me know what you think in the comments. Terrence Crawford, once again, seems like he's kind of walking away from the Sebastian Fedora fight. I'm not willing to say he's scared. I'm not going to say anything like that. But listen, man, there's an elephant in the room. And Errol Spence is taking forever to go ahead and put this fight together. We don't even know why. We don't even know who's training him. So what's going on with Sebastian Fedora? As it seems like the 154-pound weight class division, or specifically these two fighters and Terrence Crawford and Errol Spence, are playing ping pong with Sebastian Fedora's career as none of them has, are showing any real interest of wanting to fight this guy. Let me know what you think. Put it in the comments. It's your boy, Rain. Once again, shout out to the ATP Combat Media family. I appreciate you guys. Thank you for being subscribers to the channel and helping to support the channel. If it's your first time, check Checking out the content go ahead um hit the subscribe button hit your bell icon so you're getting alerts when all this content is dropping and until the next episode you know how we carry it at this point yeah